Welcome to this video. Today I will be going over how to set up a virtual machine for free on your computer. And again, the solutions I'm going over today will be free, but just be aware that if you want a VMware that offers more benefits or features, there are paid services out there. But I try to offer as many free solutions as I can on my YouTube channel. So that's what I will be including in this video. For those of you who do not know what a virtual machine is, it's basically allowing you to run a second operating system on your computer. And this can be useful if you want to play around with or learn how to, a different operating system works, or if you just need an area to test programs or whatnot. It can be very useful. Additionally, please follow along down in the notes below, down in the video description, as I will be posting the links to any of the sites that I go over, as well as links for any downloads that you need. So again, please follow along down in the notes below. Now before we get started, we do need to talk about hardware because a virtual machine can be very demanding on the hardware in your computer. Uh, and so the bare minimum specs that I would recommend as far as the hardware in your computer when running a virtual machine, the bare minimum would be a four core, four thread processor with at least eight gigs of RAM. I've done that and it works, but it can be very slow. It can be uh, unresponsive sometimes, it's not very fluid, and so that's the bare minimum I would recommend. Uh, ideally, if you have the budget, I would recommend any of the Ryzen 7s from AMD as far as a processor, uh, from Intel, an i7 8th generation or i5 uh, 8th generation, uh, both would do. Um, even the Ryzen 5 1600 or 1600X, any of those CPUs would be ideal. Uh, they all have more cores. Uh, and most of them have more threads as well. So that helps when running a virtual machine. As far as the RAM, I would recommend ideally at least 16, depending on what you're doing on the host machine as well as in the virtual machine, you may need more than that. And so you may need closer to 24, but again, it's gonna depend on what you're doing. Uh, but I, I would recommend ideally 16 to 24 gigabytes of RAM. Now to get started, we are going to need a VMware to run the virtual machine, and the one that I've picked is VirtualBox, which is up on the screen right now. Again, this is free, and the downloads are listed right here. Again, I will post the links down below in the notes for this page, uh, but you can see it's available for Windows, Mac, Linux. We're on Windows, so we're going to go ahead and do the Windows download. I'm just going to go ahead and click on that, and we're going to go ahead and open it as soon as it downloads. When the installer pops up, you'll get a window like this one. You'll just want to go ahead and click on the next button. And I would recommend uh, for most of you, especially beginners, go ahead and just leave everything here set to default. You'll notice the location on mine is set to the E drive. Yours by default will be set to the C drive. Just leave that as is and click on next. And then uh, leave these box, uh, boxes checked. I unchecked uh, the second one just because I don't like de uh, shortcuts on the desktop. If you want a, sh a shortcut, go ahead and just check that box. Otherwise, match what I have and click on Next. And then you'll want to go ahead and click on Yes to install uh, VirtualBox. And then when this pops up, just leave the box checked and click on Finish. When you get this window, this is the actual VirtualBox software, and we'll go over how to set up a new virtual machine in just a moment. But before we do that, you need to decide what software or operating system, rather, that you're going to be running on your virtual machine. And so you do have the choice of Windows, but you could also, for example, you could run Ubuntu, which is a, a version of Linux. Um, another version of Linux is Tails, which is uh, aimed more towards privacy and security, and so that's another one that you could play around with. Um, this uh, link that I'm going to be listing for Windows, this is a 90-day free trial of Windows, and so you would have 90 days to play around with it, and then you would have to reinstall it after 90 days, but it's free. If you are looking for a, a Windows key, again, I'll post all of these links down below in the notes, but you can come here to SCD key, and you can get a home version of Windows 10 for about $13. You can get uh, the Pro version for about $14. And these are all fully legitimate uh, Microsoft Windows keys. These are the OEM keys. Um, as an alternative, you can also come here to KingWin. 
uh, to get a Windows 10 key and this is also the professional version uh, just make sure if you uh, purchase from Kingwin that you're purchasing from someone who has a lot of orders you'll see that this person has over 86,000 and 99% positive uh, feedback so just make sure that you're being picky about who you purchase from just make sure they have a lot of positive reviews but that's an alternative rather than spending hundreds of dollars on a Windows key you can just go to one of these sites and get an OEM key for much much less for the virtual machine that I'm going to be setting up I'm just going to use Windows 10 and I'm just going to use the free trial and so I'm going to come back to this page just make sure that you have the ISO Enterprise selected if you're going to be using this free trial and then click on continue it will ask for some information so I'm going to cut the video here while I'm uh, filling this out and skip ahead and after you submit your information it will take you to this menu I'm going to do the 64-bit version of Windows 10 and then I'm going to select English and then download and it's downloading here in the bottom left corner it's going to take a f uh, several minutes to download and so again I'm going to skip the video ahead here once the download has completed you'll want to come back here to uh, VirtualBox and we'll click on new and the first thing we need to do is give our virtual uh, machine a name and I'm just going to call mine Windows 10 because that's the operating system I'm going to be using and then for the drop down menus underneath type uh, if you're using a different uh, operating system for example Linux this is where you'd go to select it I'm just going to leave mine on uh, Microsoft Windows because that's what I'm using and then for the version I am using Windows 10 64 bit so we're going to leave that there as well just make sure you select whatever it is that you're using on uh, your virtual machine and then you'll go ahead and click on next now on this menu we get to decide how much RAM is going to be allocated to our virtual machine and this is uh, going to be dependent on how much physical RAM is in your computer you can see in my computer I have 16 gigabytes of RAM and so whichever number you see here is going to be dependent again on how much RAM is in your computer but I do recommend starting at about 2 gigs this can be uh, adjusted later but again for now just leave it at 2 gigs and click on next and then here we need to create a virtual hard disk for our virtual machine uh, the recommended size is uh, 50 gigs um, you can go smaller or larger but 50 is the recommended so just make sure you have that amount of space on your uh, drive and then we can create this virtual drive just make sure you have the middle option selected and hit create and then on this menu just uh, use the top option the VDI uh, leave that selected and hit next and then on this menu we have two choices for our uh, virtual disk we can e either use dynamically allocated or fixed size and the definitions of each are right here but basically dynamically allocated adjusts to the amount of information that you're using but it does not shrink so keep that in mind and then fixed size is just a fixed size that generally takes longer to create but in the end is faster to use and so I'm actually going to go ahead with the fixed size and hit next and then on this menu is where you can adjust the size of your virtual disk again 50 gigabytes is the recommended but it's just going to depend on what you plan on using it for if you're not going to be installing a lot of programs on it you could even go smaller if you need more space you can do so basically you just use this bar to adjust or you can type it in right here the size that you want and then if you do need to change the location you can do so here but for most of you especially beginners just leave everything set to default just use 50 gigs and uh, hit create now once it has completed creating the virtual disk it will take you back to the main menu but now you'll notice on the left hand side it will have the virtual machine we just created I'm going to go ahead and double click on it to start it up and then when this menu pops up we just need to go to the operating system that we downloaded earlier and I'm going to select it and then we're going to click on start now basically at this point it's just like setting up Windows on just any other computer and so I'm not going to record everything here but I'm just going to go ahead and hit next and we're going to get the install started um, and then I'm going to skip ahead the video here again as well now a couple of things I should mention uh, first off to get rid of these bars we can just click the X to make those disappear and then I'm going to go ahead and continue here through the uh, setup and installation I would go with custom the bottom option 
and then just click on next and it's going to go ahead and start the installation there now again skipping ahead when you get to this menu if you have a work or school account with Microsoft you can sign in through here uh, right here that way but I think most of you for simplicity's sake are going to want to come down here to where it says domain join instead and if you click on that it's going to give you an alternative option where you just type in your name hit next and proceed through creating a password and just proceed through those menus I think this way is going to be a lot easier for most of you additionally when you get to this menu I do recommend just for security and optimization and privacy to just go ahead and turn all of these options off and then go ahead and click on accept now once Windows starts up you'll notice down here in the bottom right corner it will display how many days you have left on the trial period and before I do anything I'm actually going to click on the Windows button and I'm going to shut down the virtual machine because we're going to make some adjustments here in just a moment now once the virtual machine has shut down we can come back over here to the main menu and if I go over here to where it says window, uh, Windows 10 and right click we have an option for settings where we can make some adjustments now I'm just going to go over the basic setting options and so underneath general um, here we can make some adjustments to the name if we wanted to or the type or version uh, we could add a description if we wanted to we could even add encryption just by checking this box and setting up a password uh, for now I'm gonna leave that unchecked uh, additionally if I come over here to system on the left hand side underneath the motherboard uh, tab we can make an adjustment on how much RAM we can allocate to this uh, virtual machine so I'm gonna actually turn it up here and I'm gonna put it up to we're gonna go with just over six gigs of RAM and then on the processor uh, I'm using a six core 12 thread processor and so it sees 12 CPUs I'm actually going to turn it up to we're going to give it three and that's actually where we're going to stop with the adjustments so those are just some basic options you can see there's a lot more here uh, but again just to get started for beginners those are the main things that you want to look at as far as settings then I'm going to hit OK and I'm going to start this virtual machine back up and now it should be more responsive than it was the first time it booted up. Now that the virtual machine has started back up here I can actually right click and uh, open up the task manager and we can see that uh, it does recognize the hardware uh, that I have allocated towards this uh, virtual machine. It, you can see that it does list three virtual processors as well as if I go to the memory or RAM it does list uh, six gigabytes so it is recognizing again what I've allocated it is uh, more responsive than it was the first time not quite where I want it I will probably end up allocating a little bit more and this is why I went over hardware at the beginning of this video because hardware is a big factor when it comes to your overall experience with a virtual machine now additionally some other things that you will want to do uh, once you're set up here is you want to click on the Windows button and type in settings and everything should be up to date but just to make sure before you do anything come down here to where it says update and security and just double check to make sure that it is up to date you can see that we're not quite up to date so we're going to go ahead and do that now once you have completed the Windows updates and restarted the virtual machine make sure that you come back to this menu and just check one more time just to confirm that you are fully up to date this is very important because of security uh, reasons as well as performance issues and so again just double check one more time to make sure you are fully up to date the next thing is you'll notice that we are not full screen and so if you want to get full screen simply maximizing the window is not going to do that and changing the resolution will not fix that as well so this is what you have to do if you come up here to the top left corner and click on devices just select the bottom option that says insert guest edition CD image just click on the bottom option and then you'll come down here to the file explorer and click on the icon and then over here on the left hand side where it says this PC go ahead and click on that and you'll notice that we have a virtual disk or CD inserted into our virtual machine you'll double click on it and select the first application uh, right here the one that looks just like this double click on it hit yes and then basically we're just going to proceed through the installation just basically hit next install and it's going to go ahead and install the additional options here 
We're going to go ahead and hit install when this pops up. Now, once you get to this menu, uh, we do in fact want to reboot. And so just make sure you have re uh, reboot now selected and then click on finish and your virtual machine will then restart. Now, after we've restarted, you can see that the resolution has adjusted on its own. So we're almost there. What you'll do next is come back up here to the top left and click on view and enter the full screen mode and go ahead and click on switch and that will switch it to full screen. You will have a little menu down here at the bottom uh, of the screen that you can get to if you need to make any adjustments or if you need to minimize the window, uh, that's what you do. But basically, again, you just click on view, hit full screen mode, and then switch, and now you have full screen. The last option I do want to make sure you are aware of is if you decide that you want to delete a virtual machine, it's really simple. You just right click and then go to remove. And then you do have the options of deleting all the files or just remove only. If you want to get rid of everything, just go ahead and click on delete all and it will fully remove that installed virtual machine. That's everything for this video. If you have any comments or questions, please post them down below in the notes and I will respond as quickly as possible. And as always, thank you very much for watching this video.